joining us on Zoom and Facebook Live, and where we believe God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 you and also let us pray O God from whom all good proceeds grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding may do them through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen, amen. please be seated Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negeb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of, God, of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was nearly as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to you. God. Gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came and knelt before him saying, my daughter has died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, 
If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put aside, he went in, took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everyone knows of people who seem to not matter. We are aware that children die of starvation and disease in many places in the world, even perhaps in our own cities and towns but we don't know most of them personally. And we see people in our daily walks all the time, but we don't really know them. We don't really know what their stories might be. They're unknown to us. And for the most part, that's the way it will stay. The reality is that We do not know for sure if other people matter in the world that is so large and complex that we find ourselves struggling for meaning. What may be just as clear is that most of us do not know if we matter. We exist from day to day and wonder whether anyone out there thinks of us as important or even meaningful. Anyone outside of our own loved ones, that is. It is our world really that reinforces such an opinion. We read daily about another big layoff another war, mass shootings, another stabbing, another extreme fire or flood. And it seems that the world has grown numb from the barrage, that we get numb because we don't know how we can change what is happening or what to do with the fear and the anxiety. So I think we block it out and hope for the best for our little circles of connection. And then there's Jesus. Jesus encountered and sought out the people that would get labeled as inconsequential. So Jesus seeks out Matthew. Matthew, who as a tax collector, he had to be escorted by a Roman soldier on either side of him anywhere he went because he was despised by his society. But as a tax collector, he had the right to enforce the Roman taxes and he had the means to skim off the top, making himself very rich. To his own people, he would have been a traitor, a disgrace to his family, and they would have been forced to disown him. 
And certainly, he would not have been welcome in any synagogue. In fact, the rules of collaboration were strict. Those who collected the taxes of the occupation army were considered as dead. This shunning would have made Matthew a non-person in first century Israel. And next, we encounter a leader of the synagogue, Jarius. His daughter has died. And he goes out and he seeks to find Jesus and he finds him. And then he kneels before him, begging Jesus to save his daughter. But in the first century, the question that would get asked is, why? Because boys were sought after children and girls could be bartered as brides, but otherwise were thought of as a liability in the ancient family. Women weren't even considered people, but property to be bought and sold. And certainly this girl already dead is of no consequence to anyone but her parents. And then in the middle of this story is a woman who has been suffering from hemorrhaging for 12 years. This would have made her what's called ritually unclean. And this meant she couldn't touch anyone and no one could touch her or they would become unclean. She would have lived a life of begging to survive. And surely the fact that she is able to get close to Jesus is evidence that she was perhaps overlooked as someone of no consequence. And that day and age, avoiding her would have been the only thing that mattered. In fact, the thing that binds all three together binds Matthew, the young girl who had died, and the bleeding woman together in this gospel passage is that they were all untouchable by anyone in Jesus's position, making them a people without a place, a future, no dignity, and in a very real sense, cut off from life. But what we see, we see immediately that Jesus pulls each of these people out of their situation and returns them, restores them to a position of life and dignity. He calls Matthew to leave his tax booth and follow him. And Matthew complies. Jesus' encounter with the bleeding woman, allowing her to touch his robes, restores her and makes her well or whole again. The little girl is invited to get up, and she does. What is surprising about this is not only that they are brought in, but also what it means. Jesus says to us that we have to ask ourselves who is included and who is being excluded and why. And there is good news here. The good news is that with, in these restorations is the call that goes along with the healing and forgiving power of God's grace and mercy. Once restored, each is now called to bear witness, each to bear witness to the reality that God is present in the world, in history, in the lives of people. And they don't have to use words to do this. They are living signs of God's grace 
and mercy. So what is this grace and this mercy? God's grace is his love freely given to us. We don't ever have to earn it. His love is always there. God's mercy is compassion and loving kindness freely given. It is restoration. And so here we are. We too are now called to bear this same witness. We too are called to live differently in the world. We too are to be living examples of God's grace and mercy through our words and our deeds by welcoming all people with a special eye on those who are labeled inconsequential by the world. We who have been touched by Jesus are called to say no to the powers that exclude others in the world. It is a witness of no to the powers that drive us to serve only ourselves and a fractured world. It is a witness of no to the searches for life and purpose and meaning apart from God. It is a witness of yes to God's way of life through service. It is a witness of yes to God's invitation to all people to join in the feast of there is enough for each and every one of us. It is a witness of yes to the understanding that all of us are linked as one body, the body of Christ. And in that body, everyone matters. And this summer, we'll have an opportunity to be of service, to bear witness that everyone matters. Our VBS program has an outreach component to it, and we'll be collecting items that create what are called go bags for teens in foster care. Many children and teens in foster care leave their placements to go to another placement with their meager belongings and trash bags. So a go bag is a way to show they are cared about. It is a trauma-informed invitation and intervention. It tells these children who have learned that they are unimportant, that they are important when they receive new things of their own. The toiletries and dental supplies we'll collect communicate the importance of self-care and self-worth. The stuffed toy and blanket we'll collect help soothe and comfort. And the books, they'll provide a healthy distraction and intuitively teach stress management. And the journal will help to calm distressing feelings. In God's eyes, each one of us matters. Each one of us matters very much. None of us are consumable. None of us are to be thrown away. None of us are inconsequential. How we live what we do, it's changed dramatically when we let ourselves be touched by our loving God. And then what we do thereafter matters a great deal. Amen. Amen.
Please join me in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer we commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom lord in your mercy hear our prayer almighty and eternal god ruler of all things in heaven and earth mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through jesus christ our lord Amen. And please join me in saying a prayer for the end of gun violence. God, our hearts are broken with pain. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. the bread of heaven.
Please join me in saying the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, we have some birthdays. Marie, you want to see your digits? 70. Woohoo! Do you have a birthday wish? Okay. Dear Lord, please gift her older daughter and her husband with the gift of a child through adoption. Thank you for the special love that it is to be parents and grandparents. And let Marie's birthday be filled with love and laughter, lots of pampering, all her favorite foods and drinks, and a whole month after of more pampering and 170 more birthdays. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Chris? Oh. Uh, how many digits? 58 on Friday. 58, wow. Do you have birthday wishes? It's be a real miracle. Oh. For the, uh, I left my head at home. Uh, Happy birthday for Chris. I just give him 158 more birthdays. And maybe this year, the Mets win the World Series for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and that his day is filled with love and laughter and good health. And that he travels tons. So every time he has to travel, everything's on time just for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Happy birthday. <laughs> and when you see Austin Rugi, he's one of our uh, confirmands. It's his birthday, so wish him a very happy birthday. And uh, uh, Saturday we were at the cathedral, and so Austin, Nico, and Marissa were all confirmed. It was a really beautiful service. So. Uh, thank you to all of you for supporting them, and let's just give them another big round of applause. John, you have an anniversary, a wedding anniversary, you and Karen. How many years? Uh, eight. Eight, ooh. May you all have 108 more anniversaries. Let this anniversary be filled with joy and happiness, and let there be an adventure on your day that is a planned one, and lots of good love for the whole year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. John and Chris, you have an anniversary. How many, how many years? Oh, I'm standing here so I can see the both of you. <laughs> well, we wish you 144 more and maybe a serenade from John with his bagpipes. <laughs> All of the grandkiddos and the kids uh, to be gathered together and and merriment and fun and good food and good health and always uh, good life and adventuring together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. And I was forewarned, so uh, Amy asked for a blessing for our puppy Theo, who's he's a 70, 70, he's a seven year old, he's seven today. So, uh, dear Lord, Thank you for the gift of furry companions. 
who bring love and mischief into our lives, especially for Theo, who is always full of little sweetnesses and love, everybody is supposed to love him and he loves them back. So thank you for the gift of Theo. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are there other birthdays or anniversaries? Blessings? Okay, we will go into announcements. We had a wonderful pride. Thank you to our adults and our youth and the LGBT group for uh, putting together a pride. We had fun. We had one big lesson. We all wanted to sit down on chairs outside. <laughs> Uh, but we had a, it was a very good turnout. It was a really good experience, and it, we got great feedback. People were like, "Wow, there's a church here." I wasn't sure, but y'all are really nice. So our presence matters, and we still have some. I think we have six shirts left: large, extra large, and extra extra large. Um, and our picnic is today. I'm excited. Uh, it is in the parish hall. I was worried about um, the day that we sent it out that it would be inside. The sky was orange. <laughs> the the sun was red. You couldn't breathe. <laughs> so uh, I erred on the side of keeping our lungs uh, and us safe. So we'll be inside. Um, so yes, the parish picnic directly after this service. Um, please sign up for VBS. I actually put a sign up that came in the mail in your little box. Um, it's, they do a great and wonderful job. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you're able to volunteer, always appreciate it. And Barbara has all of the details. Um, potluck at the Deppies will be outside. I think the announcement says if it's raining, it's canceled. That would be true. Um, and uh, Sue was like, don't you want to put a sign up out? And I'm like, no. And she's like, well, what if you get like seven potato salads? And I said, that'll be the best potato salad dinner ever. So uh, just uh, well, Amy and I will have a, a hearty, which one are we doing? A hearty chili. It, it will be vegetarian, but it's very good. Um, and so bring whatever you would like and a chair. I do not have enough chairs or it will be on a blankie on the ground. Um, and it'll go from 6.30 to 8.30. And uh, there'll be a men's breakfast. I'll be there, not a man. But I'll be there to have breakfast with you all uh, at the Circle M, uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Sue looked at their breakfast menu. It is outstandingly good. So uh, <laughs> if the... Uh, I will ask for an RSVP uh, if you like, decide oh, I really do want to go and you have an RSVP, please come. The reason for the RSVP is so that I can tell the waitress I need X amount of chairs for a table. So um, that's, oh, that's July 15th, Circle M. And then uh, Kathy has an announcement for us. Thank you for using the microphone. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, um, coffee hour. Next week, no one has signed up. And we have enough dessert in there to give everybody in the room diabetes. So there will be leftovers for next week. So rather than um, me doing it all myself, anybody who's here next week, pitch in a hand. Put things out, clean things up, make a kind of a community effort. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, also, starting next week, Sorry guys, no coffee. This is summer hours. We're gonna have light food, uh, you know, light cake or whatever you wanna have, chips dip, cookies, and we'll have tea, lemonade, juices, things like that. So please sign up. There's no one for next week, but we've got that covered. Um, Amy's doing the week after. And then July is wide open except for Christmas in July, and please don't miss that on the 16th. That's gonna be great. Um, also for today, Anybody who needs a vegan burger or a vegan dog, I'm taking orders. Okay. One of both. One of both. <laughs> One of both. The buns? 
Yeah. Uh, don't have gluten-free buns. Uh, Vincent may, I don't know. Okay, oh, Vin, so if you need a gluten-free bun, talk to Vince, he's yeah. the grill master I'm today. I'm not sure whether he brought them or not, I haven't seen them, so. I'm, he, I think uh, Adrian's shaking her head okay, yes. Okay, great. So special orders, just give me special orders, okay? Woo -hoo. Um, alrighty, let's see, that's everything. Okay, that's everything, thank you. Have a thank great you, day. everybody. Oh, yes, Barbara. <laughs> you, you would think the giant Jenga wouldn't be something we, you could miss, but the giant Jenga is feeling, it, it's not feeling whole. Yay, giant Jenga has found its other half. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, thank you, everyone. Yes, there'll be a healing service Wednesday at noon with uh, Ken and uh, Ken Norian and uh, Chris Vandenberg at 11 or 11.30? At 11, it's about 30 minute service, so. And then uh, at the end of the month is uh, the one at 6 p.m. Uh, both are in the chapel. So if you will rise as you are able. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.